Hello, and welcome to the session on activating massive omni-channel personalization. In this session, we'll cover at a high level what it takes to get value out of personalization at scale. Here's what you can expect in the next about 20 minutes or so. We'll start with a quick round of introductions. I'll tell you a few words about myself and the company I represent. And then we'll dive right into the recipe for successful personalization at scale and what it takes to get there by laying down the foundational concepts and taking a look at the tools that you want to have at your disposal. Finally, we'll see how it all comes together in a composable reference architecture. My name is Vasily Fomichev and I'm a Senior Director of Solution Architecture here at Altudo. I've been a Cycler MVP for the past seven years across technology, commerce, and ambassador categories. And I've been working across all Cycler products for the past 13 years, delivering solutions from small marketing sites to large global enterprise implementations. For the past seven years, I've been managing Cycler practices. And at heart, I'm a MarTech enthusiast. I've been spending a quite a bit of time lately in Azure, artificial intelligence, and blockchain. If you have any questions about what you will see in this session, if you'd like to dive deeper into any of the topics or see how they're applied in real world, feel free to reach out to me directly via email at vasily.fomichev.altudo.co, over social networks, LinkedIn or Twitter, or through any of the contact forms on altudo.co or my personal website, same as bestpractices.com. I represent Altudo and we're a full service digital agency. We provide a full spectrum of services across digital, from digital strategy, marketing, user experience, creative, platform implementations, optimization, support, and managed services. We are a Cycro Platinum partner, and we have a full collection of Cycro specializations covering Cycro Content Hub, Experience Platform, and Experience Commerce. Over the past decades of trusted partnership with Cycro, we delivered over 500 successful solutions and we have over 250 psycho specialized subject matter experts on staff. This year alone, we're fortunate enough to have four Psychor most valuable professionals on board with us. So let's dive right in. Well, it is no longer a secret that we live in a highly personalized, relationship-driven digital world. Personalization is no longer a luxury. It is an expectation. Customers come to digital channels and go through consistent, streamlined experiences, uh, experience positive outcomes, and enjoy their interaction with digital channels uh, while all along they've been subjected to a, a highly sophisticated personalization engine. We've been used to and trained to take those experiences for granted, and it is exactly that that's driving the need for personalization. It's just because those other guys are just so good at it. So it's no longer an, uh, a luxury. So it's exactly why creating personalized omnichannel cross-brand experiences at scale that drive revenue is a key priority for brands. Now, digital natives that have started implementing personalization years ago have been able to overcome the challenges that come with that and especially with personalization at scale. There are numerous studies that show companies that were successful at implementing personalization were able to capture a larger market share in digital and that success transferred into their offline world as well. We no longer live in disconnected on and offline world. Now, there are studies showing the direct relationship between digital, online and offline success. Unfortunately, at the same time, there are many companies that dropped out. They either weren't able to realize the ROI due to the high cost of personalization at scale or they simply couldn't figure it out and they just gave up on personalization altogether. So we've done some surfing and we found six primary reasons uh, for things like that. First of all, it's the high cost of changes. You may be stuck in a limited MarTech stack or subjected to the legacy MarTech tools that simply don't allow you to scale out efficiently or cost efficiently. Now, if you're able to scale, what you'll find is a growing cost of omnichannel content consistency because now you're having to implement the same content updates across multiple channels. And that's without even plugging in personalization. Once you plug that in, your cost of content management goes up exponentially. Think about all the permutations for various 
sophisticated personalization use cases across all the channels that now have to be managed in various systems. Now, if you're able to overcome that, it's likely you'll find yourself at a place where you'll stop, pause, and calculate the cost of personalization and realize that it's simply not worth it. Either it's the analytics not giving you the proper and objective picture, tying the content marketing and personalization efforts back to your revenue, or simply the cost of personalization is so high and the impact on the revenue is so low. So many companies unfortunately drop off at this stage. Now, if you are able to persevere and get more sophisticated with channel-specific personalization, you'll likely find yourself struggling with the challenge of the increasing overhead of content formatting. To give you a simple example, let's say if you wanted to publish a social post across LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, the image attached to that post would need to be cropped in three different dimensions to fit the requirements of each social network. And that's just one example. Now think about scaling across multiple channels and think about scaling across various content types, copy, images, videos, multimedia, and so forth. So the cost of those uh, efforts, additional efforts for formatting goes exponentially up. Now, if you've been fortunate or creative enough to overcome these challenges, you are likely finding yourself in a large team of content authors and marketers who now have to manage multiple system, systems and manage content and personalization, massive amounts of content across all of these areas. So how do we avoid this? Well, first and foremost, we have to minimize our operations. Now, it may sound straightforward. Uh, however, brands struggle with doing that. The first thing that you want to do is identify what works and what doesn't and focus your teams on what works and eliminate what simply doesn't work. And that's done through creating data-driven analytics that we'll talk about in a second. Now, once we know what works, we want to automate as much of that as possible. Secondly, we have to activate self-service. We have to allow our content authors and marketers to be self-sufficient, autonomous, and make content updates and personalization decisions without having to depend on other groups like IT and development. And finally, we want to automate and operationalize our feedback. We have to create actionable data-driven insights. We have to measure our content effectiveness for each individual piece of content across all of our channels, measure the impact that personalization creates on that effectiveness, and feed that back into our operations. That will enable data-driven decisions. That will complete the feed, that will complete the loop and make the whole system self-sustainable. So what we found is only when you find yourself at the intersection of these three priorities is where you will find the positive uh, outcome from personalization at scale. Otherwise, you will be looking at uh, exponentially increasing costs that we described in the previous slides. So how do we get here? Well, first and foremost, we want to lay down some of the basic foundational concepts. The foundation has to be strong. Patching existing setup is not enough. We have to make structural changes, and we have to start with the lowest level, which is our content, and content is king. Content needs to be updated to follow atomic architecture. An atomic content architecture breaks our content up into various levels of granularity reusable content modules. It all starts with an atom. Atom is the smallest piece of our content, and it is therefore the smallest piece that we can personalize on. A good example would be, let's say, a title or a CTA. These atoms can be combined into molecules, more complex structures, which now uh, convey a particular message. Good examples of those could be, let's say, an article intro with a uh, title and an abstract, or let's say a slide in your carousel. Now, these molecules can be, in turn, combined into more complex structures called organisms. And organisms are now distinctive parts of channel-specific interface. So if we think about the web channel, these would be our headers, footers, let's say product detail view. And finally, when we combine our organisms, we get the complete channel-specific unit of view in the web channel. That's our web page. So a good example could be a product detail page. So this now starts creating a flexible 
content structure that can be modified in various ways. Because we structured our content into multiple reusable levels of granularity, we can now split test and personalize at these various levels. We can, you can now start thinking through all the creative ways we can combine our atoms with other atoms or even atoms with molecules, atoms with organisms, and we can split test and personalize these combinations. We can reuse our atoms across multiple molecules and multiple organisms. Now we can uh, create intricate combinations of content that can be tested, personalized, and reused across all of our channels. And the best part about this structure is if we need to make a content update to millions of pages, let's say a title, um, or an image that occurs across various channels, thousands of pages in various formats, all we have to do is go back to the atom where that image lives, make that update, and it's going to propagate across all of our channels, thousands of pages in uh, various formats. Now that's powerful. So once we've simplified and laid down the reusable content architecture that promotes content reusability, and allows us to drive the maximum value out of every single unit of work that we put into creating this content, now we need to start focusing on our MarTech stack and we need to simplify it. So here's a, a quick re representation of a, a simple representation of a typical MarTech stack. We have our delivery channels at the top and then we have our business services that support these channels down below. So we typically look at having some type of content platform, CMS and a digital asset management system. We might have a, a customer service platform, uh, some type of ticketing system. We would have our customer data in a CRM. Let's say if we're tied up with commerce, then we have an e-com platform. And then of course we have our marketing tools with automation, email and campaign management support. Well, these tools have worked together fine separately up to this point, but the whole thing starts breaking down when we talk about scale. And the reason for that is that every system has its own way of doing things. Every system allows for creating their own personalization, their own content, tools for administration, and they measure things in their own ways using their own analytics. And it goes on and on and on. So when we start talking about scale, we run into a wall of an incrementally increasing costs from managing consistency with personalization, our decisioning, and content. Not to mention analytics that speak completely different languages across all these platforms. So it's um, almost impossible to merge all that and provide a proper uh, view uh, and proper reporting for what's happening in your MarTech stack. So where we want to end up is in a stack that has those pieces centralized. In reality, what you'll find yourself doing is simply stopping using the analytics in your content platform, for instance, not producing content in, your, in any of these platforms, but rather acquiring specialized systems to take care of that for you in a centralized location. So we would want to store our customer data in a customer data platform. We'd want to have all of our decisioning done in the uh, personalization or decisioning engine. We would want to produce our content in some type of a centralized content hub and then push it out to all the systems and channels and bring back the feedback, the data, and store it in a centralized analytics system where we can do proper data analysis and provide holistic reporting about everything that's happening. Now, once we've done that, the next step is to move closer to the delivery edge and enable self-service for content authors and marketers. This entails allowing content authors and marketers create content, publish it, and personalize it without having to involve other departments like IT and development. So we want to empower our content authors to create content based on the atomic content architecture, various types of content independently. That content would then be transformed into channel-specific format automatically and published and at each channel, then we can apply any specific theming, any part, any theme to that to that type of content uh, presented in um, any visual representation that we'd like using a modular based presentation layer and personalize that accordingly. Now, only when we can empower content authors and marketers do that self-sufficiently is when we would be able to cut the cost of content updates dramatically. In fact, that'll also cut down uh, the time to market 
for our updates. We'll be able to release content updates much faster. Many brands struggle simply to post relevant content because by the time they go through the hoops, that content is no longer news. So what are the tools that we need to have in place to uh, empower these co uh, foundational concepts? Cycro Content Hub can serve as a central repository for all of our content, for our digital assets and for our content. Uh, Cycro Content Hub allows us to ingest or create content directly in the platform, manage it in the platform, go through the entire life cycle, and then finally distribute and archive content. There are two pillars inside the Content Hub that are essential for personalization at scale, which is the DAM and the CMP. The DAM Digital Asset Management System will serve as a central repository for our digital assets. And the CMP, the content management platform, will allow us to create the atomic content architecture. Now, not many content platforms are capable of supporting proper atomic content architectures all the way down to the atom level. Fortunately, Sitecore Content Hub is one of those. So once we've created our content, we will want to distribute it across our digital channels. And with that, one of the channels being a web, we'll push our content to a Cycro XM or an XP, for instance. In that case, what we want to do to enable self-service in that platform is to install what's called a Cycro Experience Accelerator. This is a, a module uh, that would need to be installed in your Cycro environment. However, the good news is that that module is free with a Cycro subscription license. So there's no excuse or reason to not use it. The SXA comes with a toolbox of 70 plus components right out of the box so that you can start using to put pages right out of the gate together and re uh, release new landing pages and new websites. It also comes with a whole set of authoring productivity accelerators like drag and drop, responsive grids and highlighting that make content authoring experience much more streamlined and user friendly. It comes with flexible theming that plugs right into the atomic content structure and the best part is it's a psycho product. So it's aligned with the platform and you can rest assured that your implementation will support the marketing features, which isn't always the case with custom implementations. Now to centralize decisioning, we would want to implement a CDP and Cycro CDP comes to rescue. Cycro CDP is based on three main pillars. The CDP itself, which is the aggregate of all the information about our customers. The powerful decisioning engine, which is actually what the Cycro CDP is famous for the ability to pr predict that next best action. And the third pillar, the experiences, which is pretty rudimentary, uh, in my opinion. So for the sake of focusing on sophisticated content experiences at scale, we'll stay with the CDP and the decisioning pillars. Now, when it comes to the analytics, we have two options. We can either go with the top of the line analytics suite called Parsley, or we can implement Altudo's content effectiveness scoring framework that was created specifically for atomic structures and allows us to measure effectiveness of each individual piece of content uh, based on atomic structure all the way down to the atom level across all the channels. Essentially activate data-driven insights to allow content authors to see what content is effective and what personalization is effective and what is not. So how does it all come together? Well, let's plug it all in. This is a piece of a much larger reference architecture. So if you're interested in, in seeing the whole thing, please join uh, uh, our brain group and um, brain date, and also reach out to me directly after the session. So our content will start with production in Cycro Content Hub. And the four of the channels that we have in this scenario will use Cycro XP to access that content. So the content will need to be brought into or um, synchronized with a Cycro XP using the out-of-the-box connector. Now, once the request from those channels comes into the Cycro XP, Cycro XP knows that that content is personalized. To, so to figure out what to show, it's going to ask the Cycro CDP. And it will pass the email for that or some type of unique identifier for that visitor. Cycro CDP will take that identifier and make the decision based on all the information that it has for that visitor. To make that decision more sophisticated and uh, smarter, we can bring information from other systems like the CRM, marketing automation, or an ERP, or even take it to the next level with AI. Finally, we'll plug in our Parsley for analytics feedback back into the content hub on our content and personalization effectiveness to provide data-driven insights.
Now, I have just half a minute left, so what I'll do is I'll give you another bonus tip for automating your personalization with Sitecore AI. Sitecore AI comes with two flavors here, standard and premium. Uh, there is a difference in how those two work, however, both of them activate automated personalization. Now, if you have your own data analysts or data scientists, you can take advantage of uh, what's called Sitecore Cortex. It comes with some basic predictive capabilities for personalization and segmentation, but you can use this to customize it and plug in your own machine learning models to make the platform fit exactly to your business requirements. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of the symposium.